this is going to be one of those episodes that pisses everybody off, so let's just power through it and get it done, yeah? If you all behave, I promise there'll be ice cream at the end, but you have to be good, okay? Okay, good. Today's episode is on Star Citizen. Let's rack up those views. I mean, um, report on a very serious issue. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that sounds better. Gotta remember to edit that out. Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. Ever since I saw Star Wars as a wide-eyed eight-year-old, I dreamt of being a hotshot pilot saving the galaxy or a lovable rogue making my way across the cosmos. It inspired me to make Wing Commander and has influenced everything I've done since then. Way, way back in October 2012, Cloud Empyrean Games launched a Kickstarter for a space exploration and combat game called Star Citizen. It was being designed by self-proclaimed legendary designer Chris Roberts, who founded Cloud Imperium and created the Wing Commander series. He worked on those games all the way until Wing Commander 4 before quitting game design to work in the film industry. He actually directed the Wing Commander movie himself, which is a great example of how just because you're good at one thing doesn't mean you're good at something else. He was a pretty good producer though, working on Lucky Number 11 and Lord of War amongst others. He got back into gaming in 2011 when he founded Cloud Imperium, and they got to work on Star Citizen right away. Now one of the great things about this particular Kickstarter is that unlike so many other crowdfunding campaigns, they don't rely entirely on Roberts' name alone, or the nostalgia for the Wing Commander series. They actually had a lot of the game to show and talk about. However, this being a Kickstarter from 2012, the driving force behind the campaign was the standard narrative around publishers not funding risky projects and blah blah blah. The traditional publishers don't believe in PC or space sims. Venture capitalists only want to back mobile or social gaming startups. We say they're wrong. We say that there is a large audience of PC gamers that want sophisticated games built in for their platform. And inside this audience, a significant group of people that have always loved space games. And if given a quality one again, we'll be happy to play it. Uh, I gotta say, I'm glad developers have moved away from trotting out this line. It's true publishers are afraid to take risks, but it's becoming increasingly less true. It always felt a bit like gaslighting, with developers berating publishers, calling them stupid for not seeing their true art, and then insisting that you're so much smarter and better than they are. Well, what happens if a Kickstarter campaign isn't funded? Is that to say we're just as stupid as blind as those publishers? Are you, are you saying... Are you kind of forcing us to do that, or we'll be like them? Star Citizen did, or does, promise the return of classic simulation games for high-end PC gaming, and you can certainly see the appeal in that. More and more games are becoming streamlined to appeal to wider audiences, Fallout 4 being a great recent example. Anyone seeking a deep and complex simulator has to look pretty hard, so if any developer could have gotten away with our lord and savior is returning to bestow upon us a divine gift narrative, it was probably Chris Roberts. Uh, I guess he kind of has a point with publishers in this case. He didn't though, mostly, and instead focused on this game, Star Citizen and not Wing Commander. This is how you begin a Kickstarter campaign. Star Citizen brings the visceral action of piloting interstellar craft through combat and exploration to a new generation of gamers at a level of fidelity never before seen. At its core, Star Citizen is a destination, not a one-off story. It's a complete universe where any number of adventures can take place, allowing players to decide their own game experience. Pick up jobs as a smuggler, pirate, merchant, bounty hunter, or enlist as a pilot, protecting the borders from outside threats. That sounds pretty good, right? If it were an ongoing campaign, I'd say they were being a bit too ambitious. Not to say that it's not too ambitious, actually. It enlists the reasons why you'll want to play and back the game. It's the usual marketing stuff. There's a big world, the universe in this case, to explore, and it constantly grows and changes depending on your actions and the actions of other players. This section goes on for quite a while, but there are some interesting highlights. I could sit here and read all these entries out to you, but you can do that yourself. Point is, these 
paragraphs don't paint a particularly clear picture. It's pretty incredible actually, the sheer scope of the game they're not only aiming for, but are already setting in stone on the Kickstarter page. It's clear they were trying to make Star Citizen a damn big game, something Roberts iterated on in an interview with GameSpot. Not to jump too far in the future, but this interview came in July 2014, now over two years ago. GameSpot specifically asked him if he felt he could spend the rest of his career developing it, which is an odd question out of context, to which Roberts replied, For me, Star Citizen is not like a two or three year project, it's like a ten year project, so I'm hoping that I can get the game out with the full persistent universe and people like it enough that it becomes successful, and that I have years after that to build and flesh out the universe more. Throughout this entire interview, he keeps listing off feature after feature he wants to implement, such as player-generated content, procedurally generated worlds, making vast living cities, and on and on and on. That question of whether he felt he could spend his career working on Star Citizen didn't come out of nowhere, though. It came after he said there's no finishing line for development, and he's going to keep making it and keep spending money on it for as long as he can. That's... <laughs> I don't know, incredible or incredibly stupid. But one thing that definitely sets a bad tone, especially on the heels of the previous question, is that he has almost nothing but good things to say about Peter Molyneux. I think Peter Molyneux gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes, because he definitely has his big picture stuff. Definitely what was happening, especially in the Microsoft days. He's out there saying, let's all do this, and then at the end of the day, it was Microsoft going, we need to ship something for Christmas, we have to have a fable. So product managers are out there going, cut, 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 and so Peter was all excited about some features that would be super cool, but they weren't ready for prime time at the moment, so they didn't make it. I feel like in this setup, I don't have that problem, and I don't have that same issue of you've got to put it on disc and get it out there. Yeah, there's the big ambition, but we have the hangar app and the dogfighting app, and we know more stuff is coming down the road. His argument seems to be that because Molyneux worked at Microsoft, they forced him to make all kinds of cuts and fable. Interesting. So, um, what happened when Molyneux himself kickstarted a game? It was called Goddess, and just like the Fable series, Molyneux promised a whole bunch of shit he couldn't deliver, to the point of having to cancel Goddess and move on to other stuff, and of course there was the infamous interview where he said he wouldn't give any more interviews, in which he did give several interviews that day, and it's become kind of a running joke. But don't worry, Chris Roberts says it's not going to happen to us. People already have an alpha version, so feature creep doesn't really apply, he says. Except that it had from the very beginning. Everything pitched in this campaign was so over-ambitious, so over-the-top, it wasn't even a game. It was a list of features that they wanted to implement into some big... thing. Take, for instance, a single-player mode that was pitched for Star Citizen called Squadron 42. A single-player mode for a massively multiplayer online game, by the way. Who can say why it needed to exist, why it had to be its own thing, but it does, and it is. It was like a dog with a bone. I'm not I'm calling you a dog, uh, but um, that I found inspiring. And, oh, they just released any old rubbish and then they cut and run. The way I answer that is by, by doing stuff, you know. By this separate add-on game is being developed by Foundry42, a studio headed up by Chris Roberts' brother Aaron, who also worked on the Wing Commander series. And it's starring, of course, Mark Hamill from The Giver, and also the original Wing Commander games. Gary Oldman's going to be in there too, although don't expect a Joker Commissioner Gordon meetup. That was a really bad joke. As you can probably expect, Squadron 42 isn't out yet either, and while the 2016 release date has been tentatively set, there's still no sign of it coming out and it's already August. The number of bold claims and crazy expectations continues throughout the entire Kickstarter. At one point, the page says Star Citizen will be 10 times the detail of AAA games. Most current-gen AAA games have around 10,000 polygons for a character and 30,000 or so for a vehicle. In Star Citizen, the characters are detailed at 100,000 polygons, the fighter at 300,000, and the space carrier at 7 million. <laughs> This allows unparalleled detail, making the visuals more impressive than has ever been achieved before. 
Well, that's interesting. Uh, what do you even say to that? I mean, it's so absurd and so ludicrous and bizarre, it makes you wonder how anyone could give these people money. I mean, yeah, everyone's hungry for more Wing Commander and Chris Roberts is a proven developer, but did anyone actually read this Kickstarter campaign? It's hard to tell what the hell this thing is even supposed to be anymore. As far as I can tell, though I am a dumbass so feel free to correct me, Star Citizen will be an open world multiplayer space simulation with space combat, but also trading, crafting, survival elements with user generated content, and big open worlds to explore where you'll be able to embark on big narrative driven quests that are somehow connected to single player portions starring Hollywood actors and Mark Hamill with hundreds of ships and customizable options and super duper realistic graphics and also there's a first person shooter mode now too apparently so yeah it's I don't know a mix of Wing Commander, World of Warcraft, The Long Dark, Call of Duty Minecraft a dash of Zone of Enders and EVE Online? That doesn't sound like a very focused experience, does it? And I'd love to assuage your fears, maybe give you some recent updates on the campaign and let you know how things are going, but I can't. The Kickstarter page hasn't been updated since April 2013, and there are no indication that Cloud Imperium were going to post stuff anywhere else. I mean, yeah, they still talk to the press and occasionally post stuff on the website, but as far as concrete development updates go, we're not getting a whole lot. If you're wondering what the developers are up to, it's safe to say they have their hands full meeting all of those insane promises. Credit where credit's due, I guess. At least they seem to be trying. It's clear Roberts is at least getting fed up with people, I, I don't know, asking questions. He did another interview with Polygon in August 2015, which is very different from the earlier interview he gave with GameSpot. Robert scoffs at the notion, this is what Polygon sounds like, scoffs at the notion that the company will run out of money before the final game is delivered. <laughs> it's not going to happen. We keep a pretty healthy cash reserve. We manage our expenses based on the revenue we bring in. We have development timeline and we know what we're doing. When Star Citizen and Squadron 42 were out there, I think the game will speak for itself. The <laughs> noise <laughs> we're dealing with will not be there. The people who were there and backed it all along will be happy and they'll be proud of helping make something happen that probably could not have happened in any other situation. It's pretty naive to suggest that this noise, as he called it, will simply go away. Kiji Inafune will be dealing with the disaster of Mighty No. 9 and Red Ash for the rest of his career, even if his next few games do turn out well. You've lost people's trust by taking over two million dollars and kind of disappearing, and that's something that's very apparent not only from those like me who didn't back, but especially from those who have backed the project. Some of those backers are, well, assholes to put it simply, but a lot of them had legitimate complaints and they're simply not going away. Now again, credit where credit's due, at least the team is working on the game and they're putting out some information here and there, I mean, we have an alpha build and more information about Squadron 42, kind of, lately, sort of. The fact of the matter is, Star Citizen's post-Kickstarter development has been a disaster. But you know what? People still keep backing the game. People still keep giving Roberts and company more and more money. They raised over $2.1 million on Kickstarter and continued taking donations on their website, eventually raking in $117 million. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mistyped that. All right, bam. All right, we'll fix this. Let's see here. We raised how much on the website? Um, here we go. One point. Whoa! I think Peter Manu I think Peter Molyneux gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes because he definitely has the I think put I think Peter Molyneux gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes because he doesn't because he oh fuck that's interesting <coughs> <coughs> uh, I'm sick in case you couldn't tell